Welcome to Canada's podcast. So, Michelle, great to see you. It's the second time I've seen you this week. I saw you at Collision as well, but that that's fine. Uh, but uh, for everyone at the young, this sort of listen to Canada the podcast, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I, you know, your entrepreneurial journey from like Saskatchewan to McGill to Harvard. The president of Cloudflare, uh, you know, and, and the Silicon Valley thing. Uh, give everyone kind of a quick two or three minute. The uh, this is Michelle kind of thing. Okay, happy to do that, and thanks so much for having me. And I hope next time it's twice in person, Philip, because you know Zoom is wonderful, but there's no <laughs> yeah, right. people in person, and I I do miss that. So so yeah. hopefully we can do that next time I'm in yeah, Toronto. Right. Um, yeah. You know, thanks so much for having me. And it has been a, a, a very positive, um, you know, journey. I, I grew up in Saskatchewan and very proud um, prairie girl. And then I went to school at McGill and loved that and found myself working in Toronto for many years and and uh, have many friends and met my now husband there and I ended up going to Harvard Business School. And the, the way that that all happened is I went to undergrad to study science, thinking I wanted to be a doctor. I really loved medicine and science. And I ended up falling in love with technology. And there's a lot of twists and turns of how that happened. And I'll save that for another day. But I think that that story of I thought I wanted to be a doctor, but then I fell in love with technology, or maybe I thought I was going to be an accountant and I fell in love with technology is something that um, resonates with a lot of people. So I wanted to bring that up for your listeners because I, that I just kind of happened to fall in love with technology. I, I had met, um, I started to work at a technology startup in in Toronto way back when, and that's when I kind of opened my eyes to what was possible with the team. And so I was working in technology. I loved it. And I just realized that I had a science background. I had a technical background and I missed some of the business foundations. And I really realized that I liked working in business and growing teams, but I felt like I lacked some of the toolkit. And so that's why I went back to do my MBA. And um, I think any time in life when I try and sign up to do something, I try and do it the best I can. And, and so I ended up applying to a lot of great schools, both Canadian and the US, and I ended up getting accepted to Harvard Business School. And that's what took me to my journey, first journey down to the US as I moved to Boston to go to, to, to pursue my MBA at Harvard. And that was just an amazing eye-opening experience. I had, at this point, lived my whole career up in, in, in Canada, and I loved it. And I just arriving on the campus of Harvard and just being on a global skates stage. It's a very international school, a very diverse group of students with much many different backgrounds. It just kind of opened my eyes on what was possible. Uh, and then long story short, while I was at HBS, I was very curious. I wanted to learn. I was taking it all in. And a classmate and I were on a school trip to Silicon Valley. And I, I signed up to do the trip just to, to learn more about Silicon Valley. I'd read about it, and I listened to it on podcasts like yours. <laughs> and I wanted to go see it in real life, like go see it yeah. in person. And there was a professor led trip to the Valley. This was back in January of 2009. And the world was not a very good place back in 2000, January, 2009. It had been yeah. post the financial crisis. It was gloomy. Yeah, yeah, everywhere. It, was pretty, it was pretty tough. I remember. Yeah, it, it was tough. And, and so I, we kind of showed up for this week long program in the Valley and we're meeting early stage entrepreneurs, late stage entrepreneurs. We're meet, meeting venture capitalists. And again, as somebody who started, you know, my story in Saskatchewan, just meeting these people in real life that I'd read about. Um, I remember like Jim Breyer and Mark Pincus and Zynga was the hot company at the time. And just, meeting them and getting being in the same room i thought oh my goodness and it was it was on that trip that i it almost demystified what being an entrepreneur was for me and i there was some early stage entrepreneurs that we went to hear listen to their ideas and i, I kind of walked out of that room saying oh my god like I, it was a light bulb one out i was like if these people can start companies so could i and that was a really empowering moment for me mm-hmm. and i happened to say that to a classmate on my trip and in what was probably the best answer ever, his name was Matthew Prince. Matthew said, of course you could, Michelle. And we literally started to brainstorm an idea in the hallway. We knew each other from school. And that idea turned into a school project. That school project turned into what is now Cloudflare. And I don't know, I guess the the moral of the story is being curious, being open to opportunities. And there's so many interesting people in the world and, and hard problems that need to be solved. And I feel really lucky that I've met a great business partner in Matthew Prince to to help solve our problem. And now today I've taken that idea to a company that's public um, with a lot of customers and a lot of employees around the world. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, for those that don't know, I mean, Cloudflare, you, 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 you know, you, you're being very, very polite about it. But, you know, I think the last time I looked at that, a mid, a mid 40 billion market cap. So you, you've, you, you guys have done pretty well in the, the 11 years you've been running it. But, you know, in, in that, that sort of 11 years, you know, building, building something, you know, what's been the most exciting thing for you about being an entrepreneur versus, you know, see, seeing others around you, you know, the, the, you in the valley, whatever the, the, that are, you know, senior executives that aren't in, that, that aren't a founder, that aren't, you know, that didn't create. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We've got to have people all around us, you know. But for you, what, what, what's the most exciting thing about, you've found about, that entrepreneurial journey, basically. You know, so it's interesting. The most exciting thing is a little bit of a, I don't think you need to be a founder to have it, is his, uh, it feels really good to be on a team when you're working on a common goal and and delivering on it. I, and I, 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 doing things, turns out doing things that you're really proud of is incredibly empowering. And in many ways, that's kind of what entrepreneurship is. You're, you're, mm-hmm. You have an idea and you you have to go assemble resources that aren't really in your control to build some things. So you're builders and you're building something and hopefully you're building something of value because if you do, then it just kind of becomes a flywheel that builds on top of each other and you get to meet incredible people along the way. You get to help solve customers' problems. And I just, there's, there's something very empowering about that. And I just think that's why I love technology is it's, you actually don't need a very big team to, to, to get that rush of, I'm going to build something, ship something, and then see the value it creates. Uh, and I think that that is uh, very humbling and energizing and inspiring. And so that's, that's what I love about entrepreneurship. And what I would say is just to kind of punch up what you're saying is, I actually don't think you have to start the company to be part of that. Of course, I happen to be the founder and that's amazing, but mm-hmm. the best part of my job, hands down, are the people I get to work with. And then the second best part of my job are our customers. I love that too, but just p- very passionate, smart people who do a lot of different things, who choose to spend their time helping us make the internet faster, safer, more reliable together is really fun. It's kind of like being on a professional sports team where there's lots of different positions and and practicing and working together, and then going to win the championship. I, I, there's a lot of that in the work for in a in the work setting for me. And I think building companies, being part of a growth company, you really see the impact of your contributions. And I just think that's a huge feedback loop that's really empowering for a lot of people, including me. And so I think I love that the best about entrepreneurship. And I happen to have been also the founder, but I actually think you can get a lot of that going to any growth company without having to be the founder. Um, and so I think it's that's the best part in my in my point of view. So you, you spent eleven years building this, you know, uh, and and it, it's it, it it hasn't all been smooth, I'm sure. Um, what's the greatest challenge you faced in those uh, you know in in those eleven years? I mean, it's always interesting for people to understand. Not just faced it that you've overcome, and and is is there something that we can learn from that? Please, definitely. You know, I'm here smiling, all excited, and and I and on the balance, it's been incredible, and I'm incredibly lucky. But it, it's certainly not always easy, and there are many times if we had met on a you know maybe a few hours earlier, a few hours later, that maybe I'd be like, oh, it's been a tough tough hour, tough day, and I think that. Um, I think that there's more people willing to talk about that today, which is good. I just think that's really helpful because if you are starting a company or you're joining an early stage company, what I would say is the roller coaster, there's a huge roller coaster. There are many highs and lows and they're very close together. (laughs) And, And that doesn't just last for a month. It's kind of like the first two to five years of the company's history is a roller coaster. And I just remember back, I think back to the early days of Cloudflare is, you know, you're right. We graduated from Harvard Business School. Mm-hmm. Um, we packed our things in a U-Haul. Matthew Prince and his mother drove the U-Haul from Boston to California. I happened to fly and to drive my car from Vancouver down here. So anyhow, and we show up and I look around at my other, my other 
friends who had met at, heart, at business school who now were getting signing bonuses to go work at companies. They were getting a good salary. Mm-hmm. We kind of show up in a city where we didn't really know anybody with an idea. We were taking a salary. We really did not have a lot of money in the bank. We just finished business school. It was it, it was hard. And so you're kind of looking around being like, is this the right thing to do? And, and you know, I, I think early on, it's it's not that you wake up with someone saying, yeah, this is the right thing you should be doing. You got to find the conviction from within. And that's hard to find that conviction from within. Actually, I think a lot of people choose not to do things because they can't can't do that. And so you're like, am I crazy or is there something here? And, you know, you go from one hour of like, oh, my God, this is going to be a huge company where we've got it to. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, am I crazy? Like, like, am I just delusional? And and you go back and forth, highs and lows very quickly like that. And to put it, you know, a couple of years later, again, it doesn't last start from one quarter. It's many, many, many years. It's, you know, you go from a team where you're trying to get people to come join you and they do, and they're doing great work. And then they leave because of maybe they're moving back somewhere else or they decide to do something else. And then you have to, so you're like, oh my God, you're leaving. That's too bad. To then having to get on the phone to convince someone else to join. I mean, five minutes apart. And it's these highs and lows that are very close together that I think is difficult part of entrepreneurship and being part of a growth company. And I think that's both for the founder, but any person working at that company, because companies are groups of people working towards a common goal. And often a company with less than 500 people, you really know the others and you're part of this, you're in it together, you're building. And so it's not just the founder. It's like, even working there, you're like, oh my God, my friend is leaving. Do they know something I don't? Or, oh, we lost this customer or we we won this customer. So it's both good and bad, very close together. And I think managing that roller coaster is an art and a science. And I saw someone say, it was actually Fred Wilson originally, who kind of from uh, Union Square Ventures, a really successful venture fund out of um, New York City. He vlogs every day. Right. He's kind of one of these famous um, uh, people in technology who I used to read every day. And then years later, he ended up becoming an investor. So now I know him, which is kind of like this <laughs> thing where you do something long enough, you end up knowing people. And I remember he used to blog about the, the these emergency drills that really close together, the highs and lows, and that your job as a leader at these growth companies, either as a founder or a VP or a C-level executive who comes in, is to spread them out. Because really great companies don't have those highs and lows so close together. And that was, and I think that that was a good mental model for me early on. I remember reading that when I was like 50 people and I was like, oh my God, yes, we are the the highs and lows 10 times a day. And really this idea of you got to spread it out. And we still have great highs at Cloudflare. We win a big deal. We, you know, we, 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 we ship some big products that feels awesome. And sure, there's things that go bad too, but they're much more spread out now. So they're easier to manage. And so I think that's probably the best uh, articulation that I can, that's kind of what's been hard. And, and they're for sure hard. We're a huge success story. As you said, we, we on the positive, everyone sees Cloudflare as a huge success story. And even in the success stories, there's a lot of hardships and challenges you have to overcome, but with the right people, the right attitude, you can definitely do it. So, you know, mentorship is so important. You've talked a little bit about it. Um, uh, what's the best piece of advice you've received that you keep on using? You know, you, you get you get advice and it's good at the time, but you, then it disappears. But occasionally you have a mentor that drops something on you and you keep going back to it and using it time and time again. Anything like that on your front? I do. I kind of have three and they're a little bit related, so I'll go through them quickly. The first is... <laughs> From when I was a product manager at Toshiba, check your assumptions. It's actually, um, people make really bad decisions if they make use the wrong assumptions. So you have to check, check, check all your assumptions. And, and I just, whether we were 10 people or today we're 1,800 people around the world, check your assumptions. That piece of advice is so helpful. Um, and if you understand the assumptions inputs, you can make better decisions and, and output. And so that that's one. The second one is... Uh, Never let a crisis go to waste. And this is very helpful back to the highs and lows of building That's a business. That's a really good one. I like that one. Yeah, for sure. Because you think everything is going wrong and oh, and actually that becomes a huge lever to help change something in an organization or to say, oh my God, we're doing this wrong. We got to change it. And so I think that um, we've learned over the years not to let a crisis go to waste. So you build a product that no one uses. Oh my goodness, use that to then go build the next great product or you, lo- you lose a big customer that does not feel good. That feels a huge gut in the 
punch, but okay, well, let's use why they left as a reason to fix it in the organization. Mm-hmm. And it turns out how don't hide from those, be honest about it and don't let a crisis go to waste. It actually can help be the change agent you need as a leader with an organization to set the company on a better path. And I think that that is um, a very important uh, lesson I've learned that I learned from, you know, a, a mentor and something that I, I still find myself today. And I, I know that's successful when people on our team say, Michelle, I remember once you told me never to let a crisis go to waste. And so I'm using that here and you're right. It works really well. And I, it's, you know, it's, it's just a very, I that's think that a, that's a really good one. People can use that, I think, in many um, uh, in many of their careers. Okay, just two or three what I call rapid fire questions, which kind Great. of fun, fun questions, really. Uh, are you a morning or a night person? A morning. That's, you're, you know, eighty-five uh, percent uh, of the entrepreneurs I interview are morning people. That's interesting. Kind of, it's kind of interesting. What book are you currently reading, or would you say you got to read? You know. I'm currently reading uh, Humor Seriously. It's about how I having a sense of humor in business is actually an asset, not a liability. Mm-hmm. It's really great. I love it. Um, a few years ago, I kind of had a re- realization, A, I wanted to be more funny. I was, took things really seriously. I was very busy building. Um, and I was like, I need to enjoy this a bit more. And I think laughing more, having a sense of humor has something that's made my work life better. And this book basically gives me the research saying uh, it's an asset to have a sense of humor or and, and to have levity at work, not not a liability. And they have a lot of research that shows kind of in our 20s, the, the amount we laugh goes way down uh, because people think that they shouldn't be doing that in the workplace. And actually, there's a lot of places where it's well placed and becomes an asset. So it's a it's a great book. Uh, humor, seriously. I shall read that. That's, that. that sounds really good. If you had to pick one word to describe Michelle, what would it be and why? Glue? <laughs> um, I don't know. You probably have never heard that. I, you know, I sometimes I think, you know, I, I'm not a deep expert in any one thing, but uh, we almost always perform better when I'm there. So I, I don't know how else to describe it, but just glue, help gluing things together. I, uh, my, in high school, I was on the really basketball cool. team. That's really cool. I like that. That's- that's a first. That's a that's a really good one. What's keeping you up at night? Um, what's keeping you up at night? Well, COVID, I guess, is keeping me up at night and just miss seeing friends and family and 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 uh, obviously we're, we're we're lucky we're very healthy, but I, I do miss seeing people. Back to where we started our conversation. It's I hope I get to see you in me. person. I, I know you. You Cloudflare just opened in Toronto, and you can't even be here. It's a, it's kind of a, a great chance. But speaking of that, what's your what's your most favorite place in the world? Uh, Waskasu, Saskatchewan. So it's the <laughs> Prince Albert National Park. I spent many of my summers there, and I uh, I think also part of it is May April, thinking about summer coming, and I just have very fond memories as a Canadian spending them at the the lake. And I went to Waskasu. My husband grew up in Oakville, and so Muskoka would be his answer. So we spent a lot of time. Um, Reminiscing about our lake summers up at uh, oh, cool. Waskasu. So I would say Waskasu. Good. Michelle, it's been absolutely delightful to have you, to have you on. Um, uh, you know, I'm sure that, that there's some great things that people are kind of listening to. Um, how can people get a hold of you if they have a question? Because it happens on the, um, you know, we have a lot of fellow entrepreneurs that listen and hear something and, and want to kind of get, get an opinion on it, basically. That's great. Well, I love that you're doing this. I think it's wonderful. Um, if if I can be helpful, you can find me on LinkedIn under Michelle Zatlin. I have a profile, and or you can also find me on Twitter at Zatlin if if that that's the right avenue. Or you can email me. I'm Michelle at Claffler dot com. And so the more specific the the reason why you're reaching out, the easier it is for me to reply. But I really try to be helpful to other entrepreneurs because so many people have been helpful to me. Or if you're looking to work at Cloudflare, or if we can find a way to partner or be helpful to you. Um, we, we try, I try to be very responsive. So I think those are three different ways that you can get in touch with me. Michelle, thanks once again. It's been a very, very interesting session. Okay. Thanks so much for having me.